Hello and welcome to the Ireland on the Fly podcast about the people and places of fly fishing in Ireland. Keith McDonald is well known in this country for being one of the early advocates of streamer fishing and his many incredible catches are a testament to his skills and use of the tactic. And having seen his pictures of 20 pound sea trout from a recent trip to Iceland, we had to get him on the show to talk about the trip and the experience and also to find out how the 2022 season went for him. I thought we'll hear from Keith in a moment, but it's hard to put into words just the incredible fish that Keith caught over there in Iceland. Yeah, Tara. Wow. I mean, when I saw the picture, it was just wow. I mean, that was the, the only thing you could say. I mean, it was it was like it was that like I thought it was that I wouldn't I wouldn't say prehistoric, but just something amazing about it. Like it, it was it was that colored, it was fierce looking, it was just fantastic. Um uh I mean like a double figure sea trout would be most people's fish of a lifetime. But to get one over 20, I mean, that is just, oh, it was just phenomenal. It was great to get to talk to him about it. it really was. And um, interesting in the method they caught it on because um, I was stumped because uh, I was certain it was going to be, you know, it was, it was Keith McDonald. What else would it be? Well, it just goes to show, you know. Uh, he had to resort to the conditions that were put to him. And, and the other thing as well is it was interesting. Um, it was it was tough fishing, no surprise. Uh, yeah, you, like you wouldn't want twenty two pounds sea trout to be easy now, Ferris. Yeah, yeah, and if they were, <laughs> we'd all be over there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it just meant like as he was saying, uh, he gave us the number of takes he had for the day and and the conversions, and it was it was tough fishing. It was like really tough fishing. But then, you know, if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna get fish. Or that quality. I mean, to put it into an Irish perspective, that's why people, you know, quite often will spend a day on Sheelan. You know, mm. Sheelan isn't renowned as a free rising lake at all, but they will put up, you know, with putting a lot of time into it because, you know, that next fish could be the best brown trout you have in your life. And with Keith there, that next fish at one stage turned out to be the sea trout of a lifetime. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'd recommend anybody just get onto Instagram or onto um, the uh, streamerfishing.com. You'll see the pictures. It's. I was just. It was just to me. It was like the dark black colors, the yeah. size of it. It just yeah. looked like it was just. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was. I want, and I don't want to because I just don't want to say it was scary. It was just. Yeah. Wild, just I was going to say it was scary. <laughs> yeah, it was just wow. Angry. Just, angry. Yeah, angry. <laughs> the fish was angry looking <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but as I suppose it. it should be yeah exactly um actually tell me this uh streamer fishing do you do much of it yeah I do actually I would do a bit of it but I suppose it wouldn't be I would use streamers such that I would use minkies humongouses like I know Keith is a great man for the articulated streamer when you look at that and he ties a lot of them I, I don't think there are any great advantages in still waters but I've yet, you know, I, I'm still early enough in my lure fishing to, you know, I might, I might change in that, but I have tried them a couple of times. I think uh, articulated ones come in better when there's a flow. They fall as such. Um, but I should try them more. Yeah, I do do quite a bit. And I, I think it's, um, I, I think it's a genre of the sport that's probably ignored a lot. And as we, a lot of our lakes now have a lot more, fry in them and uh, and fry feeders i think it's something that we we should concentrate a lot more on keith has really put it to the fore and uh i i said that to him as well i say one time was i had a client out and you know they opened their box showed me and they picked out this fantastic extreme and they go it's one of keith mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no um i think uh there's a lot more uh scope for it on the on still water um, is there a bit of snobbishness to it? Of course, there's a bit of snobbishness to everything <laughs> in fly fishing. I know, I know. Particularly so with lures and lakes. Oh, or, God, so. yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'll chuck it. <laughs> I'll chuck it. <laughs> tug's the drug. You know, the tug's the drug. There's snobbishness by dry fly anglers towards wet fly anglers, you know? Sure. And, you know, I, mean, I suppose wet fly anglers can now get their own back on lure anglers. <laughs> so in the hierarchy of the chain yeah. you've got yeah. dry fly wet yeah. fly and at the bottom are we talking about the bottom feeders are the streamer the lure well, fishing yeah, <laughs> sorry yeah, Keith the lure, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah there would be um, I don't care I'll, I'll, I'll try it oh yeah 
Well, I tell you, if you show, if you're to show anybody a picture of a double figure sea trout and said the only way you're going to catch it is on streamer, I'd say most people would go, yeah. Yeah, I'll I, have I go. think the amount of people who would go, no, I'll pass on that, will be very, very few, very few. Yeah, they might, you know, they might, you know, talk, talk beforehand, but uh, I think at the end of the day, they'd uh, they'd be chucking a streamer too or whatever it was. Listen and you find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and also, we, we talked to Keith as well, not just about Iceland, but about his 2022 season. Um, some interesting insights there in terms of kind of difficult conditions in the summer uh, and then kind of what worked for him in different times of year when, when that was good for him. But I, I love chatting to Keith because he's so into the streamer and he's such an expert in that. Mm. And, you know, the results speak for themselves in it. Um, you know, that... And I think he, the way he's encouraged it as well, you know, he's really brought it on in terms of opening people's mind to, you know, the possibilities with it and then also how to do it, you know. And yeah. So there's a mine of information, information for that. Um, sure, look, why don't we um, have a listen to, to Keith now? Um, and Tom, you first asked him about the fly he caught the 22-pounder on. Small uh, jig head fly. I mean, I went armed with huge stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, because the guide is really into streamer fishing. So I'd spent, you know, literally since March having every eventuality <laughs> covered. Yeah. Um, but we didn't get that. We were hoping for, you know, proper filthy streamer conditions and uh, we didn't get them. The river was uh, clear and low. So have have they had the same lack of water mm. that we've had here. Yeah. So we have to finesse it a lot, you know. It was a, so all these big, massive streamers that you prepared, the big, dirty streamers, didn't get to use them as much as you'd like? Uh, yeah, not as much as we'd like. I mean, we did get get fish on them, but, uh, yeah, the bigger fish came to, like, hairy little rubber legs, uh, a jig head type thing. Um, yeah. and, and the big lad you got actually was on a jig head. How, how are you fishing it? Um, varying it, you know, you can uh, throw it upstream, throw it cross stream, um, you know, just covering water with it, really. Um, and the big lad, how did he take it? Uh, he took it on the drop as I yeah. tossed it in, he took it on the drop and he tightened in and just took off. And I knew immediately he, he went upstream that it was, uh, it was you know, what we were after, really. Just I never felt uh, a fish. Uh, a strong do you know and it was just immediately obvious it's an amazing experience um this sea trap would have been would have been big for that river yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was big it, for the river. i mean it's it, the guide has got them it, that so that one was 90 centimeters the biggest one was 35 point something inches um so that's you know you're getting up um uh, to the the biggest fish that are there um you know, there was one or two this year in Iceland in autumn now around uh, 94 centimetres. Um, in spring, uh, Maris, our guide, he got one, uh, you know, up in the late 90s, almost a metre long. I think it's hard to crack a metre. You know, that's <laughs> a, an extreme giant. But you see, I think they're getting bigger over there. It seems to be just getting better and better in recent years, you know, having kept a, an eye on it. Um, and anecdotally, they tell you that it's to do with catch and release, that uh, traditionally the fish would have been very much a food fish and nothing would be put back. And that's that's changed. And because they're repeat spawners, that they're, they're coming back every year bigger. So the guide reckoned those big fish... Um, I got one 89 and one 90 centimeter fish that they're, you know, somewhere in the 10, 12 year old range. So, Would they have been season's best for the river, Keith? Um, they'd be up at the, the top end of the chain. They're, you know, they're, it's what we went for. It's what, you know, what, why the guide stood out to me because he was putting fish out on, on social media the last couple of seasons that are up in that range and I thought I really have to go and try that. I, I've been to Iceland a few times. I've had some good fishing. I've had some really tough fishing and and you know it is it's not uh it's not a case 
that you buy your ticket, show up, and and it happens. Um, it's it's tough. So I really got lucky. You know, there is a certain amount of luck involved. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know? Tom, um, have, you, have you ever done ice on Tom? No, never. It's on the it's on the big bucket list. You know, I don't know if you listen, Keith. We have two bucket lists here. <laughs> we have the big <laughs> bucket list, which is anything outside the island of Ireland. Then we have the small yeah. bucket list. No, yeah. not the actual size of the bucket. We just wanted to call it the small. So anyway, in yeah. the big bucket list, I have ice on. So I'd love to go. How many times have you been? I've been three times. Um, all for trout. Um, yeah. I think salmon fishing is probably a bit out of reach. I wouldn't be particularly interested in going there fishing for grills, but um, it's it's very very expensive. And the guys were saying a ticket on a half decent river is in the order of uh, you know hundreds and you know a thousand fifteen hundred euros a day wouldn't be crazy for for salmon fishing in Iceland, you know. So anyway, the the I mean they they really know how to charge for fishing over there, but it is reasonably doable um and you know we, myself and and mick were saying you know that the accommodation and, and food was was really good do you know i mean it was kind of 60 euros a night for accommodation which you'd find it difficult to get that here now and even for us i like were you far from Reykjavik like because Reykjavik's infamous for its price isn't it like yeah, the first place we fished is about an hour outside Reykjavik, and then we went on. It was kind of five hours southeast of uh, of Reykjavik, maybe four hours. So at least, yeah. So you were a bit far from the madding crowd. So at least it was cheaper in terms of accommodation and kind of that side of it. Like, was it is it very much kind of where you were? Was kind of anglers? It was that kind of far from the mining crowd, as I said, or? You don't come across too many anglers in Iceland on any of the trips. I mean, the the first place that's an air outside Reykjavik, we did meet some local guys um, and it's a beat system. So it's the river is split into three and you wrote, it's, it's a funny system actually, because you get rotated every two hours, which is far too soon. You've only settled into fishing by the time you go. So, but, so we bumped into some local anglers, but other than that, I mean, you drive over river after river and don't see anybody. From what I'm led to believe, though, quite a lot of the trout fishing fishing is either inexpensive or actually free. Keith, is that the case? I don't know about free. I I think you probably could go and bang on a door and say, "Do you mind mm. if I go fishing?" I haven't tried that. There are some cheaper options, certainly. Um, like they have a an annual ticket that allows you to fish something like eighty lakes. Um, and the the lake fishing can be really good and a good average mm. size of, of fish. And come here, did you get that ticket going over there to cover you, no. or, did, no. or because you were going to the guide, you were sorted? Um, because we were going to the guide, we were sorted, and then we booked one other river. Um, just that Mick had been there before and he'd had good fishing on it, so we went back to try that again. So it's about doing a bit of research, really, um, which can be tricky in some sense because it's a, it's a foreign language. Um, but the the Reykjavik Angling Club have a great website. Basically, they have uh, control over a large number of rivers around the country, and you can book that in advance. Um, so the one you see up com- coming up regularly is the big Laxa, um, where they have the great dry fly fishing that's controlled by the wreck of the canyon club and you can book that in advance um so that's a, a useful place to go and would you recommend that like because like you said from my impression of iceland was you know very expensive fishing you know you know how to to, to, to milk it so to speak yeah. but from what you're saying kate there's a real you know just put a bit of time and effort before you can actually do it diy you can get good fishing at a good price if you just do a little bit of research beforehand. Yeah, yeah, for sure you can. I mean, the, the sea trout trip wasn't, uh, the, sea tra- the sea trout fishing with the guide wasn't cheap, but obviously, you know, you're paying for somebody for a day, so. But it was doable, I mean. Yeah, yourself and Mick booked the guide between you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then once you've that done, he arranges all the fishing from you. Did you tell him specifically what you wanted or did he suggest things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he wouldn't even tell us the name of the river before we went. We had to trust him. <laughs> right. Were yeah. you blindfolded and put into yeah, the back of the jeep? I'd been talking to him for a while and he's 100%. You know, we knew knew it was the, the real thing. So it was just, you know, to... Uh, I guess he has to protect his, his business, you know, as best he can. Get so many people on the internet going, you know, where did you catch that? Where did you catch that? He gets the same, you know, so... I, I believe you'd even have podcast interviews asking you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The members' exclusive uh, version. Of Tom, you have to pay a hundred quid. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, actually, so just in case anyone's under the impression, I don't think they're under the impression. Maybe from from hearing you talk about it, Keith, it wasn't as if you just rocked up cast your heart's content and caught as many big fish as you wanted one might get a different impression looking at your instagram feed but uh, oh. <laughs> from all the lights that were but and i'd recommend if somebody, uh, anybody reads um, your blog post on give us the url um keith it's streamerfishing.com is the the website yeah. and if you go to the news and blog there's you know the latest uh, posts we put up yeah. And it's well worth reading because it's interesting and fair. Yeah. Yourself and your friend Mick went over there. You caught a couple of lunkers and your and your friend Mick, highly accomplished angler, he struggled over the few days. And it was just really interesting to read that kind of juxtaposition of there was you and there was him, you know. But as you said, he, he kept at it and he got his reward in the end, though. Yeah, he, he got it in the end. Um, and look, Mick won't mind me saying... Uh, it really was, uh, there was uh, distance casts involved um, and that really made the difference for me that I was able to, to get the, the distance, uh, required distance. I, I was actually going to ask that before you actually said that because sometimes I even see it on a boat as a guide. Sometimes there is no difference and luck can go the way, but sometimes there is just a small little difference why one rod would catch more than the other. And you put it, you you put it down that your ability just to get that little extra bit of distance helped you. There's there's absolutely no no doubt about it. And um, yeah, I mean, I got cut out like that once before. It's how I ended up getting really into the casting because I said that's never going to happen to me again. <laughs> you know. So, um, but in fairness to Mick, he did it. He he got it done. In the end, and uh, he, you know, he really, he fished hard, and, and he got a reward. He got, he got the reward. Yeah. He got a reward. Uh, just, just a rundown again. Like, what were you talking there? Like, when you're targeting bigger fish, uh, as you were in this river, the sea turtle. I presume you're not getting bucket loads of them in the day. So, you know, what are you talking? You know, are you talking certain amount of takes and just? converting those takes into uh, into actual fish landed or what is like was it lively were you moving fish what was what, what was that river like it was really tough it was two right. to three takes a day right um, so we were there uh three days um on two days i got two takes a day and got the fish uh, well let's say i got four four fish in total right over the three days and lost two um, so it wasn't uh, like they were, you know, they weren't. Yeah. Coming. It was hard work for them. It was obviously. really hard work. Oh, yeah, it was hard work. It, it's two weeks later and I'm still uh, really tired from all the casting and fishing, do you know, because we were just fishing nonstop and that, that takes its toll on you. And I hadn't fished for six weeks before that because of the low water. I just stopped fishing, do you know. If you had fair, if you were faring similar to Mick, had been over the few days, and if you had done kind of similar to Mick, you know, how would you have looked back on your time at Iceland? Would you still have looked back on it as God, it was great fishing, and I'd go back again, or would you have looked on it slightly differently? I I think just having a goal. Um, you know, we said before we left, if we got a double figure fish, we'd be really we'd call it. A success and I've been to I mean I went to uh, 
pink falabatten, the, the big uh, trout lake in spring, for a week, um, one April, and the fish were out at 50 meters. So the vast majority of the time, you just couldn't get a fish. So I know I've been there and it can be really, really frustrating. But if, you know, if ultimately, if you get a fish and, uh, and get what you went for, and look, it's not all about the fishing. We had super fun, you know, um, and enjoyed the scenery and the people and, and all of that stuff. So, you know, it, I call it a success for sure. Yeah. Would you go back? Or like, if you got it on your plans to go back in 23, 24? Like? I, I'd really like to go back next year, but it just depends. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but... I mean, if we have a summer like we had this year with no, no water again, you'd be, doing you'd be dying well. to get back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> just you brought it up there, and a lot of people would be sort of aware of it. The other day, uh, Pink of Allen, is that how do you pronounce it? Yeah, uh, uh, I'll try my best. Pink yeah. of uh, So, so most people say Tingleir, like Tingleir. Um, yeah, because mm. that's the one you, you, we see a lot of it online and social media. Uh, I think one of the outfitters has one of the beats on it where a lot of the big fish are caught, isn't it? That's right, so, yeah. Like, the rest of the lake, while it does hold fish, this 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 beat is quite the prime beat in it. Were you on that beat? And, like, and also, did you fish any other part of the lake? So uh, on a previous trip, I went with uh, Kieran O'Kelly and we fished one of those hot spots. Now, it's not the... So, um, on the south end of the lake there are three main hot spots one is where there's kind of hot water springs going into a bay and then there are two uh, streams <clears throat> basically the way i understand it is that these big trout go out into the lake and they feed on arctic char um, and because the water is that big bit warmer in these streams and hot water springs it increases their metabolism. They digest the fish. They come in to digest the fish, basically, and head back off. Um, so it's kind of a, a funny one, in that you know when I was there with Kieran, um, he caught a, I think it was a twelve or thirteen pound trout on a size fourteen clean camera. Do you know? And it, it's just, it's mad. Um, so you have had all these fish stacked up in the in the current going into the lake, um, huge fish, um, but they switch on for a very short period of time. Um, and so then on the other end of the lake, um, you've got the national park. You can fish that on the uh, the national fishing license that I mentioned. It's about eighty quid, I think. And uh, that's just real perseverance, you know, because you're looking at, you know, it'd be like going along the shore lock carb and, and spending the day casting. You You know, you might bump into one eventually, but you, you, you could might, be lucky. Yeah, yeah but yeah. So, yeah. It's so, that, so that's quite tough. And then there's a couple of other uh, beats that are, uh, you know, the, they can be successful at, at different times of the year. The, the The most expensive ones are the, I think they're run by the Ion Hotel and uh, they're, I'm not sure what price they were this year, but they're, they're very expensive. Yeah, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. So I haven't tried both. Let's say the, we, the name that we find, the Thingy Lake, the Thingy yeah. Island Lake yeah. and, and the Sea Trout. Uh, You'd go back again for the sea trout. Would you go back to Thing of Allen? No, um, I wouldn't. I I just like moving water, you know, fishing ah. rivers, really. I think that's the most important part. I mean, I really wanted to go and catch one of these big silver ice age trout from the lake. Um, we got some medium sized ones, and they're, they're strong and they're fun. Um, but um, you're kind of limited in that you're stuck in a, in one spot, do you know? Um, and 
it's nice to to fish you know variations different water types and keeps you keeps you interested well i say if anybody's seen the pictures check out keith's uh, instagram feed <laughs> it's uh jesus i can't what did you call them again the, like prehistoric kind of dinosaur type the tingle ones they call them ice age trout they actually say that they're uh, i don't know why but the fishery scientists say they're uh, irish sea trout that got landlocked in the lake it'd be interesting to know more about that right. yeah right they, you, if you looked at a carb trout and the spot pattern, some of them are very simple. It's they are simple. very similar. I've, I have looked at a lot of pictures of them. Mm. I'll hold my hands up. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Uh, they, they do, actually. They look fantastic. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, that sea trout fishery is is really interesting. The south, southeast of, our, of Iceland, they have these huge braided rivers and um, the, the sea trout fisheries um, for much of the year um, and you know I've seen quite a number of people say oh well you you know like in spring that the guys are fishing for them but the the fish actually seem to live in these big uh, estuaries year round you know that they're not fishing for kelts per se do you know the fish right. for, yeah fish. Uh, obviously when we were there it was September the fish were coming in they're there to to spawn ultimately, um, but I, has there been, uh, actually just while we're all about them? Has there been any research done uh, like now that there's good numbers of them? How many? Like, would they have any idea how many times that fish you caught? How many times that that spawned? Has there been research like that done on them? Not I sure. mean, they're all multi spawners, I presume. Naturally, yeah. but I know they can spawn a, a good number of times. Mm. But I'm not sure exactly what the the figures are. We bring might bring it back closer to home, Keith, because you mentioned obviously just in terms of the low water um, for yourself. How 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 did the season um, fare for you? Maybe give us a quick run through from start, middle to end. Sure. Well, I was lucky. My season started earlier. I had a second trip. <laughs> my brother lives in Slovenia, so I fish went fishing for huko, which is the Danube salmon in February, um, and I was just recovering from. COVID then, so it was a struggle. You've got um, the kind of 11, 12 bait rods and 10 inches a second sinking lines. It's a big predatory trout um, in the tributaries of the Danube River. So um, I managed to get one of those fishing with uh, Rock Luster. He's, uh, he's a great guy over in Slovenia. He, um, I fished with him a good few times. Um, and they're just, you know, if you're into uh, streamer fishing or even pike fly fishing, they're they're great uh, fish to try for. Um, and they um, their their season for huko is uh, our close season, so it's good. Um, so that was the start in February, and then. I had better than normal uh, fishing for trout in March and April. Um, I think the the water temperature, uh, I think anyway in spring, uh, uh, the water temperature is the, the differentiator in terms of me having success with the the way I like to fish with the pulling the streamers and that sort of stuff. Um, so, so this year was a, a bit better. Um, I'd some uh, spring salmon fishing as well with the streamer, which was really cool. Um, we put a post up on that on the streamer fishing thing as well. Um, and uh, one fish was 18 pounds fresh fish. It's really my PB. Uh, so so that was a great start. Yeah, the, Where was that, Keith? That's on the Slaney. Oh, okay. Um, the Slaney appeared to have some some good size fish going on in spring this year. Um, so that was on the the lower end of the, the river. Um, Mick, uh, my buddy, fishes. He lives around that direction. So um, we uh, we fish together a good bit there in spring. And uh, May... 
May was terrible, really. At the end of May, um, I decided to go and look at a new river. Um, and on the second trip, I got a fish. It was four and a half, maybe a bit bigger, four and a half pounds. So I was absolutely thrilled. It was as beautiful a fish as I've ever seen. Um, so I knocked a bit of crack out of that river for a while um, and had some good dry fly fishing in June. Um, and that was really it. Do you know, I never got to, to get back at anything after that um, because there was no, no water. A lot of the time I just couldn't fish. Um, so, you know, there was ups, ups and downs. Um, I'd probably be um, in the horrors if I hadn't had Iceland to look forward to the whole time. Yeah. No, I'm sure going, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll be going over there. But it was pretty, pretty grim, you know, like the, the River Boyne, which I like to fish. Um, it really didn't get a, a flood since spring, you know. Bad shape. Some rivers, some of the photos I saw were really, really scary. Would you be tempted to go lakes or, you know what I mean, look, you know, to try find some water? Like, or you... Yeah, I'm, I, I fish lakes occasionally a couple of times, but as I was saying, I like to fish to features. And I suppose, um, I think just the, the longer I'm fishing, the more I just like to fish the way I fish, and that's it. And it's you, really good. You like your rivers yeah. and you like fishing on rivers. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, can, I can actually understand that fully. I like rivers as well, but like yeah. I probably I am more of a lake man. Yeah. You know, I, I do get to fish rivers and I do like them, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm more accustomed to lakes. That's why I look at Thingavallon more than, yeah. the, the, than the, the sea trout ones. But yeah, I'd see what you do. And I, I think. I think if you find yourself, you have to go to, to lakes for the river's not been there, you'll suddenly feel, see like it's uh, this is a substitute. Yeah, It's one thing going to a lake when you know, well, you know, if this isn't on, I can always go back to the river tomorrow evening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I know. When you, have to, when you have to resort to it as a as as a substitute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> and, like, I mean, dry fly fishing on the lake is fantastic when you got the conditions, but... Mm. For me, being in Dublin, if I make the spin, um, you know, an organised boat and drag the engine out and the whole lot, um, and you can go out and then the the wind blows up in the evening and you're you're goosed, you know, you've nothing. Mm. So you can go to a lot of effort for, you know, and, and then have to pack up and go home at all hours with young family at home and all that. And, and then, you know, the, the other thing, I mean, I had a couple of, of hairy moments in boats. One time in Koran, a big water sped came across and nearly threw me in. And it kind of, you kind of see your own mortality. <laughs> you know, particularly with the kids, you're kind of like, you know, I know, the, I mean, there's risks on rivers as well. What I do love doing is uh, the spring salmon on Caramore. That's super fun. Would you fish traditional wets or would you, would you give the streamers a go? On the mm. on Caramore? Yeah. Nothing on the streamers there as well, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you, uh, would you were, and, and Tom as well, yourself, we're going to see a lot more drought conditions and we are seeing a lot more drought conditions. And we're getting a taste of, I think, what lies ahead. You know, I know it's here, but it's like we still kind of don't accept as if it's going to be the new normal. Does that worry you? It does greatly, yeah. It really does worry me. I mean, there's nothing I love more than... Um, you know, seeing it rain, absolutely pump rain, it gets me excited and I want to go fishing and you go to the river and the river is flying down and, you know, that's what gets trout and salmon excited. They love mm -hmm. it and they become aggressive and they want to pull flies. And I mean, if you're not seeing that, then, I mean, you know, you can, of course, you can go get the nice evenings for dry fly, but you have to have the, the other bit too. Yeah, it's it's a bit scary. So you went to Iceland, remind me of this, September, wasn't it? Yeah. So pretty much before that, you had been fishing really since... I, did, I didn't really fish in August at all. You didn't oh. fish. And interesting, going back there, you found May a disaster. Why do you think? 
Um, well, because you didn't have conditions for dry fly fishing and you didn't have conditions for streamer fishing. There was no water and there was, you know, cold north winds and yep. you know, it was just... I mean, there, there's a big correlation between lakes and rivers there straight away. You know, we, we, we were the same. We had no fresh water to freshen up the lakes. The lakes started losing the water, which isn't, a, which isn't as big a problem, of course, as it would be to stream. But the northeast cold winds do not help things. And where they don't happen with us in the lake is they mightn't actually affect the trout, but they'll affect the trout's food source, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. The highlights of yourself for your season was the, in the Danube and Iceland. Yeah, Irish trout is glaringly missing. <laughs> yeah, so June, um, I, I had quite a number of good fish. I had one six and one six and a quarter in the dry fly and a couple of fives and twos and threes. So... Yeah, that June I did get some good dry fly fishing. Yeah, so my buddy Kieran, he texted me the other day when he was doing his tally. Kieran O'Kelly, a fish with a lot of great angler. He uh, he's had twenty fish over three pounds on five different river systems. So that's quite an achievement, I think, for Irish Irish fishing. That's that's really good. And you you've also found a new river. Yeah, yeah, which has really uh, got me excited about spring. So yeah. something that uh, a river that I didn't know was worthwhile, uh, you know, is potentially. Isn't that great? Isn't that great that you found something? You know, I'm really surprised, isn't it? Like you would have thought in this day and age with all the information going on everywhere that's so easily shareable and accessible that to come across still... No, it's brilliant. There's so much stuff going on there that, that doesn't even go on, on social media. I mean, I had a, a guy get in touch with me who had got, a, yeah, a, a double-figure trout on the river, saw the picture a whole lot on the dry fly this year. So that That's fantastic, but in a way, it's kind of reassuring that everything goes on to social media. Yeah, no. You know, it's, you know, it's great that there's a certain amount of... And I'm, I'll use the word secrets. You know, Ooh. we all, you know, your secret place or secret location or secret spot. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, it really is, you know, or, or you know, I, I just, Dan, that all comes from you saying that you found a new place and like you've done loads of river fishing going mm. all over the place. And for you now, just this year to find a new place, I just think that's brilliant. Yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting and encouraging because, you know, I did feel that I was stuck in, you know, going to the same old places for for the last couple of seasons. Um, so it's great to to feel that way that you can still go and explore because there's there's no end of water to be explored. And uh, you know, like to to go to the second time to this river and get a fish, you know, four pound plus four and a half pound uh, trout. It just shows that there's mm. stuff out there. Stop relying on social media, people. Get out there. And... <laughs> yeah, no, you, you have to go and look for it yourself. You know? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And even um, if you look at the the old books for for some of these places, they don't have the information in them either. You know that they don't that are not aware that the fish are there. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and Keith, we're just to be. Uh, I was going to say for people, you know. Keep an eye on um, streamerfishing.com in terms of your blog posts, some great pictures, some great articles go up there. Um, and it's all part of um, the company Impact um, Fly Fishing that you guys do. You specialize in streamer fishing. How's that going? Because it's it's great to see uh, a new brand like that that's focusing in on a specific area like that. And some people would say relatively new, but I know you've been doing this years. But are you seeing kind of more of an uptake and an interest from people kind of going, oh, I might try my hand at that streamer fishing? Yeah, definitely. Um, and thanks. It's uh, It's been great fun to do it. We did it, you know, set it up over COVID. Um, and uh, it's, um, we're just trying to grow it slowly, hopefully, um, and add bits and pieces in as we go. So we focus on the flies initially. Um, and I've been tinkering with a, a rod for a while. Um, so that's you know hopefully that'll 
come to fruition in the near future. Um, and yeah, it's really just focusing on the thing we like to do and sharing the information. And, you know, for me, it's kind of the creative aspect of it, the photographs and writing a bit about stuff and the flies and um, just putting across the kind of fishing that we, we like to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good fun. It's, it's really great. And I really think that the blog and everything is good. And I think you'd need to commend yeah. it as well, Keith, because I think um, you really pushed streamer fishing out there and opened it up to a lot of guys, which has been really good for the sport. It's another it's another avenue. And like you really played a huge part in that. So I said, Thanks. fair play to you. Appreciate mm. yeah, no, it. Yeah. I do recommend the flies. <laughs> I got a Yeah. I got a, a present. I bought myself a present last Christmas. I think it was. Um, and in fairness, you guys did it was a, a packet, like where you get the, I think it was the tippet and the, yeah. the, the leaders and the flies. So I got myself all, all set up, ready to go to do it. Like, Dara, how does your Chris Kindle work? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I got me again. <laughs> so what I do every year, right? The kid, Santa, Santa's obviously going to the kids. The wife has ticked off the list. And then I'm next. I, I go, right, what can I get myself? <laughs> Streamers. Because I can always open something up on Christmas Day that I... <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know what the coolest yeah. thing about it is when somebody uh, takes the flies and you give them a bit of information and then they come back one morning with a, a photograph in your... Mm email of, of something exceptional that happened yeah. to them and that's that's happened a few times uh, recently and it just it makes my day it's just fantastic do you know remind people of the url um keith and what they can get uh, it's streamerfishing.com and we've got you know streamers and and sundries a few the, the right tippet for example is really important because the amount of times people have got on to me over the years and said well, how do I start? And I say, well, go and um, get a conehead woolly bugger and make sure you use really heavy nylon. And they come back and they say, yeah, I got the woolly bugger and left it in somebody's mouth on six or eight pound line. I, you wouldn't believe the number of times that it's happened. So you got to have the, the right setup because they, they hit the fly quite hard. And, you know, you've got to have be able to absorb it the shock and hang on to them. Um, so, yeah, all those bits and pieces. And, you know, there's a, a plan to that. The next question that I always get asked is what lines. Um, so we hope to have a, a line in place um, and the, the rod. Uh, the rod, we've done uh, three prototypes at this stage. So I think we're pretty close. And uh, it worked on a, a 22 pound sea trout, so I'm happy enough with that. <laughs> it passed the test. Well, yeah. I, I definitely recommend it. And like I said, there's some great blog posts there, which is great mm. information for people that do want to find out that are looking to start or just find out some more information about it. Um, highly recommend it. Yeah. Final question to you, Keith What was your most memorable fish? Surprise uh, to the conversation that we've had. Um, yeah. I was thinking about a good thing, but, but one that really stood out um i'd say early 2000s up until then i probably hadn't traveled too far um so i, I fished the daughter a lot and i did a little stream rod for the daughter but anyway i decided for whatever reason i'd book into pontoon bridge hotel and get a ghillie and go fishing on Loch Con. um so i had to go anyway and uh the gilly was Vinnie O'Boyle. I don't know whether you know him or not, Tom. I don't think he's around any longer, but a lovely... lovely yeah, I remember guy. the name. Yeah. He, um, and like most people, uh, you know, he would have been into wet fly fishing. And I arrived with my little eight-foot four-weight stream rod, four-pound tippet and a couple of little dry flies. And... Uh, so it was a really rough day um, and we went out through big rollers and I was kind of 
you know, wondering what was going to happen. But this was all, all I had and I was determined that's what I was going to do. So anyway, we weren't at it that long and I dropped the little clean camera out onto this big roller and the big beak came through, took the fly on the way up and went down and he was he was over four pounds. Um, <laughs> and, uh, like just absolutely screamed off. I had a tiny little, uh, little really screamed off with it and I got him. Um, so that was that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But uh, finding those things happening again <laughs> is great. Absolute rare. class on, on your little on your little stream rod. Little stream rod, yeah. I just Fast. didn't know what I was doing, really, did I? Well, yeah, did didn't harm you, did it? <laughs> <laughs> it was all I had it was all I had, but yeah, it was a really memorable one. That just you know gives you that really great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. The rest, they say, is history. Yeah. <laughs> well, Keith, congratulations on um, the season that's been, especially Iceland, uh, in terms of the fish cut there. Some incredible, definitely recommend people to check out on Instagram. What's your Instagram, please, uh, Keith? Uh, McDonald, Keith. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I definitely recommend check it out there because it's just... To see, seeing is believing when you see these pictures. Like, of the- yeah, I'm, I, well, I feel really lucky to have had that experience, you know, because when you're wanting something like that to happen for a long time, and it does, you know, it's kind of, it's brilliant. And a great, great way to finish the season for you. Keith McDonald, uh, continued success with um, Impact Fishing and uh, streamerfishing.com for people to check it out. And uh, thanks again for joining us. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again in 2023 to... Find out some more lunkers that you know. Thanks, guys, and continued success to you. Cheers, Keith. Thanks, Minion. Great to talk to you. Our thanks to Keith McDonald for joining us on the show. And don't forget to rate, review, and follow the Ireland on the Fly podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Plus, you can keep up to date on IrelandOnTheFly.com as well as on Instagram. And myself and Tom will be back with another episode about the people and places of fly fishing in Ireland.